So now in this video we're going to take another uh, quick look at a circuit I'm working on. So let's kind of work in order. We have this capacitor here just to stabilize the voltage coming from the power supply. If I bump it and whatnot, it affects the power there and uh, it affects the circuit. So this capacitor will absorb those voltage changes as uh, current needs change. Now we have here a uh, NE555 timer that I wired as an inverter. The input right now is low. That's going to pin 6, the threshold pin, and then pin 2 over there is also monitoring the voltage. I'm not going to go into detail about uh, why in this video, but uh, it's a 555 timer. You can learn about 555 timers if that's confusing. So, in any case, a uh, low input means a high output. If I take uh, the input there and put it to the positive supply, now we have a low output. So this still hasn't affected that circuitry yet. That circuitry is waiting for right when there is a high output and only right when there's a high output. We'll look at that, that coming up. So now we have a low output connected to ground pretty much as good as it can. The capacitor is storing uh, a voltage so that stray signals don't affect it. It uh, stores a lot more charge than stray uh, signals can uh, move and uh, so when we put it to the positive supply, the capacitor will fully charge, hold uh, 5 volts, and when it goes to the negative supply, it will go down to 0 volts, and uh, the capacitor will hold the 0 volts, even as we move the jumper around until we give it a, an exact uh, voltage from the power supply. So in any case, this jumper now, coming from the output, the same one that's switching the LEDs, it's coming to this capacitor again to stabilize the voltage. Didn't think I would need this, but I had uh, some problems that it uh, seemed to fix. So. Again, it's going to help hold the voltages. Now, we have this jumper to the positive supply. So this is the data pin. And uh, so that's a D-type flip-flop on that side and a D-type flip-flop on that side. The uh, loads, I have them wired, basically as polarity indicators. They're letting us know it's high if they are red. The output's as close to 5 volts as it can. And uh, when it's blue, then the output is as close to ground as it can be. For uh, both of these resistors, uh, for both the LEDs, there's a resistor to limit current going to the other power supply. So, we we uh, we have it at positive. So we want to move this to uh, the negative supply right now. And we could have did this earlier. It didn't matter. What matters is that we get it done before we get a high output there, a high pulse. So I got to go. Remember, this is inverted to the negative supply for a high output. And there you can see that now we have the blue LED light. It's low because our data pin was low. So now, moving along again. The uh, clock right there, that a uh, jumper, so this uh, D-type flip-flop is down one spot, that one's up one spot. So to get the same pin for that one as that one, you just go down one, and we have a jumper connecting that. That was monitoring what the state was of the output of that D-type flip-flop right there. And uh, so it was high remember and uh, so it said be high which it already was so it did not uh, change so what we're gonna do is uh, we could just do it again now and you'll see that it goes low right there but only right when we change that uh, pulse and uh, we can set this low again actually before we do that that uh, shouldn't have affected anything let's set so that we know nothing's shifting. This is actually a 2-bit shift register. That's the circuitry that we built right there. So we went low, it stayed low, and we went high. And uh, so we were high, it stayed, we went low, it stayed, it's right when it goes high that things change. And there you can see the output is high. And now let's do it where we set that one low, but since that one's low, I mean, we'll set that one low, but since this one's high, that's what I meant to say, it will set that one high. So we'll have low high right there. And so what we're doing is we're taking serial information. This is going either high for a period of time or low for a period of time. Actually, I'm talking about the data pin right there. It's either high for a period of time or it's low for a period of time. That's all it can do, but we can just keep monitoring every so often whether it's high or low and transfer that and uh, so we did it twice it was high for a period of time and then low for a period of time so we got high to the right and then low to the left and we can see what it did over time 
but we can see it all at once. And we could transfer that to other circuitry if we wanted or something. But uh, that's uh, all we're going to do in this video for the demonstration. And again, it's just a preview. I'll go into these topics in more detail later on, but I'm still working on the circuitry. And uh, so it's going to be a while. So I thought I would make these quick videos to fill in the time in between. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting to the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.